So corporate responsibility brought to you by a gambling boss. <laughs> the notion of positioning the company as a responsible citizen is essential to what we've tried to do for a long time across a wide range of issues. And this one, the issue of sustainability, has emerged in a very different uh, way, and I think in many respects a very encouraging fashion. We have added this statement about corporate sustainability practices to the Code of Commitment, and we ask our employees to consider this as one of the responsible elements of our general posture. We operate a business that's 24-7. We make most of our money when most people are not working. So our best employees are working Friday night, Saturday night, holidays, Super Bowl Sunday, New Year's Eve, all the times that most of your best employees aren't. And during these periods, they have customers that are tired, their room isn't ready, their plane was late, they lost more money than they thought they would, somebody's mad at them, there's some issue. So in this business, the capacity to have employees who are driven to be hospitable is very important. We had to do something extra with our folks to provide them the sense of self-esteem and value in their position that would lead to the kind of experience for our guests that was truly memorable. One of the things that increasingly motivates our people is the company's commitment to sustainability and the support they receive in doing something about it. And that's really been the magic of this effort and what I want to talk to you about today. So if we can get our folks excited about this, and in a way that is based largely on volunteerism rather than dictum, that is, we say to folks, if this is something that excites you, we want to support that. Please do everything you can to act in your local area to do interesting and innovative things to support our efforts. But we're not going to scold you if you don't. The program was by this point maturing from a purely volunteer effort to something that began to feel a little bit more like it had strong support from senior management. We then began to significantly increase the resource load devoted to this. And we did this in a couple of ways. Employees would come forward and suggest that there was something they could do locally that needed a little bit of funding. So in St. Louis, we own a tremendous amount of pasture land around the levee. And our employees said that it would be more environmentally productive if that land was farmed for something like soybeans. And they wanted a modest grant to go out and hire someone to do that with them. So we have a budget now, and we provide grants. You can see they're quite modest for people to go do things that they're interested in. As you all know, measurement is a very powerful tool. Very uh, ambitious people, if measured on anything, no matter how enthusiastic they may be about it, will respond rather forcefully. So on the one hand, you have to be careful not to measure too many things in such a fashion that you dilute the consequence. But certainly, the introduction of measures and, and relative positioning is important. So every week, yesterday in fact, all of my operators get a report on guest service quality across our company, 54 properties. So if you're the manager of our facility in London, and you pick up the document and you see that service in London is a little better than Chicago, but much worse than Las Vegas, that bothers you. And it bothers you that every one of your peers saw that report too. There's no hype around this. So beginning two years ago, we introduced the same notion with respect to our environmental activities. And the measurement structure has four critical elements. What did we do with respect to energy consumption? And how much did we save in energy consumption compared to the prior year? What did your customers in your property tell you about their uh, recognition of your code green efforts and the importance of those efforts to them? What was your rate of reduction in carbon footprint? And how did you manage your recycling responsibilities? And how did your employees react to these efforts? To what degree are they aware of them? And how do they rank the importance of these efforts in their employment with us? And this then comes out as a scorecard. So you look across and you see that in Perez Lake Tahoe, there's an overall score. It turns out that Lake Tahoe, not surprisingly, very environmentally active. People are really involved in it. Scores are very high. You can find other places, for example, our Flamingo property in Las Vegas, a little bit less so, but improving. This same measurement now comes out as part of four critical measurements that the company sees repeatedly. Financial performance, guest service performance, employee-related enthusiasm and turnover issues, and co -green. Very talented young people come in to see me. They come in with the view that the only way I'll make a decision is on, on dispassionate economic grounds. 
So they believe they have to prove through some enormously rigorous exercise that whatever they want to do has a return associated with it. That and the formula so, to do that. And a formula to do that. So I'll give you an example from yesterday. Young woman in our procurement function knows that I don't like styrofoam cups. And for some reason, we have a lot of them. I'm not quite sure why. And I'd like to get rid of them. I want to have an environmentally appropriate cup, right? Turns out these cups are a little more expensive. So she comes in sheepishly, is certain that I will turn her down to change our procurement from styrofoam cups to alternatives that are more expensive. And she has reams of analysis to show me precisely how much more expensive it will be to make this switch. And she's beginning to go, wait a minute. We're trying to position the company in a certain way. We care about all this, right? Yes, yes, we do. Okay, get the good cups. <laughs>